Hey, I'm in uh, Southeast Texas again. Uh, seems like I'm down here quite a bit. Uh, it's uh, in first week or so of January and it is cold. It was 23 degrees this morning with the wind blowing about 15 miles an hour. So it was a little bit frosty down here. Uh, looking at some tracks that an investment group that we represent bought and um, the, the bottom number of tracks, they all have different types of uh, access or no access or questionable access. And um, we deal with that all the time in the business that we're in, you know, with rural real estate. And I wanted to talk about the access just a little bit. I, I What got me thinking about it, I just uh, sent another book to Amazon that, that I did. And it had a couple of chapters in there that dealt specifically with, with their various access problems. So I, I thought we'd visit with it, visit about it for just a minute this morning. What I run into, what we run into all the time, uh, basically four situations, four scenarios with access. Uh, you got you got tracks that's got deeded, uh, legal access to a public road. Straight up simple. Uh, can't get any easier, better than that. You got tracks that you can that don't have access, but you can get access to uh, relatively easy, easily. Uh, it might cost something, but it's a, it's just a process to get the access. Uh, number three, you got tracks that don't have legal deeded access, but they do have a physical access, meaning there's a road, a trail that goes to it, by it, touches it, that has traditionally been used to get to that property, but it doesn't belong to that property. So that access is not deeded. It's not merchantable. It means it can't be conveyed from one landowner to the next, but it's usable. And then number four, you got tracks that are just out in the middle of uh, nowhere. I mean, you got to go around by Laura's house. It's one of those tracks you just can't get there from here kind of deals uh, that has no physical access. There's no road or trail to it. There's no deeded legal easement or servitude to it. It's just out in the middle of nowhere. We got some of them scattered around here like that as well. Uh, the track that we're looking at today, or I'm going to go look at one of them, is a track that fits scenario number two. It doesn't have legal deeded access, but we can get it and get it relatively easily. Uh, there's a process and a check, but we can get it. Uh, the track I just left, and I got some video of them, took pictures. Um, it's got public road access. It fronts a county road here in Southeast Texas in, in uh, Jasper County. And it's, you know, driving down the public road, property touch, there it is right there. Uh, couldn't be any simpler legal deeded access is the best of course and folks there are people that will not touch a track unless it's got legal deeded access unquestionable uh no problems no ifs ands or buts it's got to have that legal access or they're not going to buy it and i understand that they don't want to buy a problem uh so if you're getting ready to put land on the market for instance you and you've got a way to solve the access issue you might want to look at doing that before you put it out there otherwise you're just going to turn off probably about 85% of the potential buyers because they're not going to touch it uh, almost at any price unless it has legal access. So the track I just left, that's a no brainer. Track we're going to, we're going to get legal access to a timber company. There is a, an old haul road that goes to it that goes across a regional timber company in this area. They've got a process that you've got to go through, some paperwork, pretty onerous paperwork, meaning uh, the contracts all hang on just a minute. Yes, sir. Hey, anyway, I don't. I, got, I had to stop and visit with that gentleman there. He had a, a, a question out here in, uh, on the road, uh, so I don't not can't remember exactly where I left off. But oh, the track that we're I'm going to now, um, we're going to get legal access from a timber company, and you know they there's going to be a, it's going to be a legal deeded easement here in Texas. It's called an easement. Louisiana would be called a servitude. The language, it's the same, just depending on what state you're in, the the, uh, the, the language that's used. But we're going to get an easement across them. Uh, it's going to be a, a certain amount per foot and linear foot and then, a, you know, a, a certain amount one-time administrative fee. And then uh, if we want it surveyed, of course, we have to pay for that. So we're going to do that. It's going to cost several thousand dollars, but this is a track. It's going to be, I think it's about 80 acres and it's a very short distance for the access. So we're talking about for several thousand dollars, we're going to have a legal deed at a 30 foot wide easement to almost 80 acres. So when you do the math across that, you, that's worth that. 
if it were two acre deal it might not be worth that but you know 80 acres for the money we're going to pay you divide the cost of that across 80 acres it's it's a no-brainer slam dunk you got a track that's going to be hard for most people to want to buy because there's no legal easement now we buy a legal easement everybody's going to be they're all going to be interested so problem solved that's going to be an easy one the third type uh are tracks that have a physical road to it but there's no legal deeded uh guaranteed right or use of it a lot of timber companies uh in where in my part of the country are, are like that people buy a track that's on or off of a uh, a road that's owned and maintained by a large timber company and typically you can use that road now they they may or may not grant you a deeded legal easement to it but it's been traditional use for that track um, and so people that are used to buying land selling land used to that kind of thing a lot of folks are not scared of that because they know they can use that road to hunt, to get timber out, to, to be on the property and enjoy it. Uh, they can use it anytime they want and never have a problem. The, the, the issue with it is most banks are not going to lend money uh, for a track to someone who, who doesn't have legal access to it. So typically that deal has to be a, a cash deal where a buyer is buying it for cash. They've got their own money in place. They're not needing a lender to close the deal. So that's no problem. And then when they get ready to sell it, again, they're in the same situation maybe some of you are in. They've got a property that doesn't have deeded legal access, and it's going to be hard to find a buyer for that unless it's a buyer who's uh, sophisticated in rural land tracks or a cash buyer, and they understand that, hey, it's not the perfect situation for access, but it's, but it's doable. And so they, they take a the little bit of risk with it and don't have any problems. The fourth situation, uh, and we've got some tracks that are like that here in this big package that we're uh, working, that we're trying to find a solution to, are tracks that are out in the middle of nowhere. There's no deeded legal easement. There's no trail to it. Uh, we're having to deal with landowners between the county road or the or the state road, highway and the track, figure out who owns what, approach them, and, and try to buy an access that's one problem and then when you cross that bridge solve that problem now you got a 20 foot wide or 30 foot wide easement across undeveloped raw land that may have pine trees on it this big around or or uh, hardwoods or whatever and now you got to develop the road you got to go cut the timber off of it and clear the road uh hope you hopefully you negotiated the access in a location where the topography is good so that you're not going through creek bottoms and uh, wash out and low spots and you know you've got good topography where you can go in and when you get the ground cleared and a crowned up road that you've got a good solid road that you can use in the future so, uh, we, we've bought these before done it a number of times and sometimes you just can't find the perfect spot to put the road. You got to get the best spot you can. And so you may end up having to put in, uh, you know, some culverts and, uh, you know, some, some crossings across little small creeks or drains or that sort of thing. It's not hard to do. It happens every day. It just takes a little more money and a little more, you know, thought to make sure you get it all done right. So that when you spend all that time and money to finally get your access and your road, that the, the first five inch rain that comes along <laughs> doesn't uh, keep you from getting to it anyway. So anyway, there's some things to think about. Uh, states are different regarding their, their laws for uh, access, landlocked tracks. So if you've got a question about where you are regarding the property, uh, the state you're in, everybody's got an opinion. You talk to some guys and it's, oh yeah, it's definitely A, B, C, X, Y, Z. But before you go spend a bunch of money and jump through a bunch of hoops, be sure you're satisfied in knowing uh, that, that you've got it figured out, that you got the laws understood. So it wouldn't hurt to go talk to somebody that's an expert in that and you know and make sure you understand what you're dealing with before you go jump into something that's going to cost you a bunch of time and money uh, other than that get after it man uh by owning land out here and in, in god's country in the united states is nothing better so find your track uh, hopefully it's got access but if it doesn't there's some solutions to it uh you know get some good pe people involved and help you to understand that and and go get it uh, you hope y'all have a great new year bye